go ahead and let's pray. Father, I thank you for this night. I thank you for the truth. I thank you for revelation. I thank you for speaking to us supernaturally. May Christ be exalted in all that we do and say in Jesus' name. Open your Bibles, and I'd just like to take us to Ephesians chapter 3. I quoted it to you this morning. This morning I was sharing with you uh, 18 major important points. And like I said this morning, when you go to Bible college, they teach you three points at a time. But as you, if you read Ephesians chapter 1, I went through Ephesians chapter 1 and I began to write down every, what I would consider a declaration or important uh, fact. I, I, I counted 45 of them in chapter 1 alone. So I know we're saying, oh, well, people can't handle that. Well, uh, look at the epistles. Look at, look at what, we, what the uh, apostles wrote by the Spirit of God. And it's amazing. But if you take a look there, in beginning in Ephesians chapter 3, in verse 4, Paul says this, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Notice it's one family. We're one family in heaven and earth. How many got a bunch of family members on the other side, spiritually speaking, don't we? And even in the natural, my mom's over there, my sister's over there, my sister-in-law's over there waiting for us. That he would grant you, got a little girl over there, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory. Whose glory? His glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, the hidden man of the heart. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by, by faith. Everything we have, we apprehend it by faith. We take it by, just reach up and take it by faith. All spiritual blessings in heavenly places are yours. The victory is ours. Like we were praying tonight in our prayer gathering and even just a little while ago, uh, Pastor was, Gary was talking about it, that we are more than conquerors. We are kings and we are overcomers. How? By faith, not by our feelings. Not by our circumstances, not by our opinions, not by the philosophies of men, but because the word of God says we are. And so I say, I am more than a conqueror by faith based upon what God has said. And, and you know, God can't lie. Say that, God can't lie. So he says by faith that you being rooted and grounded where? In love, in love. Uh, of course, love is the... Uh, Fulfilling of the law, God is love. Uh, our message is a message of love. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. May be able to what? Comprehend. No, notice, revelation comes when Christ is rooted in your hearts by faith and you're rooted in love. Revelation will come. To me, revelation is the will of God, the word of God becomes more real to you than the natural circumstances. To me, faith is a revelation of who God is, what God has done, and what God wants to do. That's what faith is. Faith is a revelation. In the old days, we say, the light came on. Oh, by his stripes I'm healed. Oh, I can do all things. Oh, all my needs are met. Oh, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Oh, I can have what I say. That's what Jesus said. You can speak to the mountain and command it to be cast into the sea. And if you'll believe in your heart, not doubt, those things which you say shall come to pass. What are we speaking? We're speaking the will of God. We're speaking the promises of God, over 7,000 of them. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. That means it's beyond your human intellect. The natural mind cannot comprehend these things. I, I cannot explain to you. I can tell you miracle after miracle I have seen personally in uh, people we prayed for in my own personal life. Whether it be physical, mental, emotional, financial. I've seen miracle after miracle. How many have seen miracles? Can you explain it to people? You can't. It's supernatural. We serve as supernatural. That was the first point of 18 points this morning, that God is a, is a miracle-working God. God still does miracles. When you take the miracles away from God, he's no longer God. 
And, and the, the church, matter of fact, the Bible says having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Now, uh, I think most uh, people who have believed in Christ will declare that the new birth is the greatest miracle that there ever has been, ever will be for our lives personally. But you know what? It doesn't stop there. The, the miracles ought to just start coming like an avalanche. Now, we're not, we're, we're not seeking miracles. You believe for miracles. Say, I believe for miracles. And, and, and Jesus, if you take away the miracles from the ministry of Jesus, he would not have had a ministry. Hello? And matter of fact, he proved who he was by the miracles that he did. And actually, the disciples gave evidence to the resurrection of Jesus, not by their great oratory preaching, but by mighty signs and wonders. Why would God change that? God didn't change. He said, I'm the same yesterday, yesterday today, and forever. He's, Jesus Christ is, is the same. If, if God ever did it once, I am the Lord and I change not. Listen, God still proves who he is by signs, wonders, and miracles. Because he, Paul said that your faith would not be built upon flesh or the confidence of men, but in the power of God. The power of God. And, and so uh, every one of us, we could line up here tonight and I say, come up here very briefly. And I know you couldn't do that. But if I said, come up here tonight, very briefly, tell us the miracle that God did for you. Well, why don't you think we could tell it briefly? Because we can't. It just pours out of us. Amen. That's like saying, Pastor Mike, preach a five minute message. Get out of here. There ain't no way. Now, Pastor Gary surprised me last week. He actually stopped at 19 minutes. That was God. <laughs> See, I thought he got one minute up on me. I quit at 20. That was God. <laughs> Amen. You know, for some people to talk for 20 minutes, it's God. For us to shut up, it's God, ain't it, Gary? <laughs> Amen. And to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you might be filled with what? With all the fullness of God. I said this morning, what exactly does that look like? What does the fullness of God look like? And I, I believe what it's talking about there when it's, it's talking about the fullness of God. And I, I just, because I, I be, you know, I was really meditating on this aspect. And, and I, I got to thinking about, okay, what is it? Because sometimes we might think, well, the fullness of God, that, that means his power, his glory, uh, even his presence, uh, you know, but, but I, I got to thinking, okay, and I, I'll look at some, if we get a chance, we'll look at some other points of the 18 points I shared with you this morning. But let me find this one particular here. Uh, I believe being filled with all the fullness of God is being filled with his divine character and his nature. I really do. And, and Jesus was full. He, the fullness of the Godhead was in Jesus. That means no matter what you did to Jesus, when you would, if you would slice him and dice him, cut him and crucify him and mortify and hang him on the cross, what came out of him? What came out of Jesus? Nothing but love. Period. This love. Love came out of Jesus. Love came out of Jesus. And, and you know what really the, the Bible says that really that's where God is wanting to take us. Because what was the major purpose in God creating us? That we would be in his likeness and in his, in, in, in his image. We would be one with him. That, that's the ultimate conclusion. Listen, everybody in heaven is, that, that was born again, washed in the blood, believed on Christ, followed Christ, obeyed Christ. They will be one with God forever. That means even as God is love, we will be love. We will be loved. And what does the Bible say? They'll know that you are my disciples because of your love for one another. Love never fails. Just read 1 Corinthians 13. Long suffering, beareth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Love never fails. So really, and, and how do you apprehend love? By faith. By faith. By faith you apprehend. And, and you declare, I will love like God loved. And it doesn't come from us, it comes from Christ. Because Jesus said, if a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire, they are burned. And I really think the greatest, the, the greatest difference between us and the world is not just signs, wonders, and miracles, but is where people love love. And if your people love, that means your people that forgive. It means your people who don't backstab. It means your people who don't gossip. It means your people who don't find fault. If you see something wrong with a person, it's not to criticize them, but to pray for them, isn't it? 
It says the love of Christ constraineth us. So in, in Ephesians 3, it was talking about that, that we, that we that the, the love of God rooted and grounded in love. And the enemy comes and he wants to rip the love of God out of you. And, uh, and, and actually, he's going to succeed in a lot of people. It, it says, for the love of many shall wax cold because iniquity shall abound. The word love there is agape. The love of many. I know many Christians, they began what I call this love walk. Did you know the new birth is the beginning of a love walk? It's a love walk. Now, love doesn't mean you let the devil get away with what he wants and you, 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 and, and, and you pacify people in their condition. No, love will warn people. Matter of fact, the Bible says, if you warn out the wicked of his wicked way, then his blood is on your hands. So love is a two-edged sword. Love will warn people. Love disciplines. It says, if our natural parents disciplined us for their own convenience, what does that mean? It means we disciplined our children. Uh, my parents disciplined me, but it, was, it really wasn't for me. It was for their sanity. It was for their sanity. But now God doesn't discipline us for his sanity because how many know that no matter what happens in this world, God is never going to lose his mind. But he disciplines us because he loves us. He brings correction because he loves us. And that's why he gives us the scripture. Love gave the scriptures. Love gave the son. Love gives correction. Love gives direction. Love gives guidance. Uh, love does it. Love performs the miracles. Faith that worketh by love. So uh, God wants us to be full of his love. And so it says that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. I mean, I, I, that, I want to be full. I, I can't tell you how many times, and some of us, Pastor Pete's got some amazing stories where he went in to pray for somebody, or he was, and the love of God hit him. And, and, and when love hit him, uh, faith just flowed. And people got healed. How many know what I'm talking about? Love flowed. That woman who died at Cracker Barrel, it was love in my heart, and God raised her from the dead. Uh, uh, I can't tell you how many times the love of God just rose up inside of me. And when I went to lay my hands on someone and it was the love of God, it wasn't me. It was God's love and faith and love work together. So love, number two, joy. He wants to be full of joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. They all know what the fruits of the spirit are, but joy. God wants you to have joy unspeakable and full of glory. That means you can shout no matter how bad it is. You have joy. And, and, and joy. Now, all of these characteristics of God, they're deep flowing rivers. Because remember, the Bible doesn't say a river. It said rivers will flow out of your belly. You know what the rivers are? I believe it's the characteristics, the nature, the personality of God. A river of love. A river of joy. I didn't know what real joy was until I got born again. And when I mean that day, I was committing suicide. And I was going to slip my wrist. And I was weeping and feeling sorry for myself. And the fear of God hit me. I fell to my knees. And I'm telling you, when I cried out to Jesus Christ, love hit my heart. And joy hit my heart. I mean, I had joy for the first time in my life. Now, I'm talking about a natural happiness. I'm talking about a joy. How many of you have experienced the joy of the Lord? I mean, the joy. Joy. It's new wine. Howard, have some. <laughs> Yes, you need some. <laughs> that whole road needs some joy. Y'all have some joy tonight. Go on, just go ahead. You can drink all you want. Amen. And if you can't drive yourself home, we'll just let you lay on the floor. <laughs> you thought I was going to say take you home. No, brother, can't we'll take you home. <laughs> the joy of the Lord. How about peace? I didn't know what peace was. Peace that passes all understanding. Supernatural peace. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Peace. Grab a hold of that's your That's your inheritance. Peace in the midst of the storm. Now, now think about Jesus. Did you know Jesus lived in the realm of all of these, these fruits? He lived in it. He walked in it. He breathed it. He talked it. He, he functioned in these areas. And so when he, he was in the, and he told his disciples after a long day, he got into the boat and he said, now guys, I'm just going to give you one little job to do. Just go to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And, and I've been to Galilee. And let me tell you something. It's no, it's no little pond. It, it's, it's large. It's not as big as the, what we call uh, the, 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 our, our uh, Great Lakes, you know, up there towards Wisconsin and Michigan and Minnesota. But I'll tell you right now, there, it's, it's large. You can, you can see the other side, but it's, it's 
it's a way long way off. And I don't know if you've ever been out at sea when there's a storm. Matter of fact, I've been on rivers in Alaska when storms came up, and you would have swore you were out in the ocean. The waves are just so massive, and the wind was so strong. And, and they didn't have no, no uh, uh, gasoline motor. I mean, they had, they had, and they had a sail, but when the wind blows like that, you got to take your sail down, and the only thing you can do is roll. And they're out there in the midst of that storm, and their boat is full, and they wake Jesus up. Guess what? They had no peace, and they had no joy, and actually, they were blaming Jesus at that moment. And so, when, they, when, when Jesus woke up, guess what? See, the devil's going to try to rob your peace. You can have peace when everybody else is tormented. If you're de- it's, it's, it depends on how deep you're in God. Now, if you, if you lose your joy, you need to go back into God. I, I told you how when I was in Alaska and I was trying to minister to the Yupik Indians and, and those rascals, they were all about my age, a little bit older. And, and first of all, they didn't have white men in the village, but one guy who was a school teacher. And so I took a pontoon, I took an airplane with pontoons and we landed and I got out there and I'm hunting with them and I'm fishing with them and they're persecuting me, they're mocking me, they're feeding me the duck heads and the duck feet and the duck guts and, and you say yeah well that was the normally what they ate I didn't see him eat that stuff <laughs> that's what they gave me what did you do I read the scripture it says bless whatever they put in front of you and eat it and and I'm telling you what those duck feet were really really hard to chew it's like chewing cow leather you know <laughs> And uh, so anyways, I mean, I'd suck the eyeballs out of that duck head. I'd get all the meat I could get because they weren't going to feed me much. And they had what they call an underground, we call it, they call it a McKay. It's an underground steam house. And it's built, uh, they, they built it with uh, 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 plywood and two by fours. And, 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 and they put a metal roof on it. And then they put uh, the tundra. They ripped the tot up like, like uh, the, the sod for, uh, in your yard. But it's way thicker. And they cover it all up. And then they dig a pit in there and they put a big 50 gallon barrel and they cut a hole in it where they can adore and, and, and they put it down into the dirt pile and then they line the floor with wood planks and then they have a little bench and it's probably, I don't know, it's probably at least maybe, maybe it was about maybe 12 feet long by 6 feet wide. And then they pile rocks on top of it and they build a fire way before you get in there. They get a really nice and hot, just as hot as they can. They have a, a, a chimney pipe that comes up and they get in there and they do contest. And they, they take a, a long, like a two by four with a coffee can on the end. And they got big buckets of water and they tip it and they dump it. And that steam comes off of those uh, uh, red hot rocks and it begins to hit you. And I mean, it's hot. So you always go in there. The guys go in there always naked and they have a washcloth. And so I just went along with the guys and then they put the washcloth over their face because you can't breathe in that steam it'll burn your lungs and there's been guys who have been known to die because they have a contest and if they don't get out of the building they'll fall on top of it and they'll actually burn to death in it and so they, they've been doing this since they were little kids. I've never done it one time in my life. And so I'm in here and the Lord told me. He said, there was three young bucks and me and an old guy looked like a walrus, no teeth. And the Lord told me, 19-year-old kid, he said, they're going to they're gonna try to drive you out to mock me. He, and, and I heard the Lord say, trust me now. And so the only thing I knew when you don't know what to do, you pray in the Holy Ghost. So I got in there, and I'm sitting between these young bucks and the old guy, and uh, he be- begins to dip the water, and, and they're waiting for me to get up and run out like a... And, and to them, it was not just the fact I was a Christian, but I was a white man. It was involved in that, too. But I'm in there, and I know what's going on. So I'm praying in tongues. I'm breathing through my wet uh, dish rag, you know, and, and, and it's getting hotter, and it's hotter, but I'm not feeling the heat. I'm really not. I mean, the heat's just hitting. And before you know it, and, and it, it really about killed these guys to get out of that building and leave me in there. So one after another, the young bucks leave. Boom, boom, boom. They're gone. I've got peace. I've got joy. I'm operating in love. Don't let the devil get you out of the realm of love. No matter how you're persecuted, no matter how you're attacked, no matter how you're ridiculed, no, no matter. See, even though I was just a 19-year-old kid, I had been uh, abiding in the vine. I had been abiding in his word. I've been, I've been drinking from the divine nature of Christ. So his nature is in me, though I'm a baby Christian. His nature is there. And so I had no bitterness. I had no anger. I had no, you know, uh, uh, only one time if I would have had a gun, I would have shot him. But uh, that only lasted about for about five minutes. You know, we, we were way up. A river and and we got stuck on a a, 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 a a sand dune and they told me to get off of the boat and give them a push now they've been really really 
attacking me, verbally mocking me, speaking in their language. And I knew what word they used to mock whites. And, 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 and so when, they, when, when I got the boat free from the sand barge, they, 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 he turned the, the, the engine full blast and he left me behind. And, and, and I mean, there's a bunch of grizzlies. Now, these grizzlies, they're, they're not the tame kind of grizzlies. These guys will eat you in a heartbeat. And, and I'm in an area where there's, I, I didn't see no grizzlies at that moment, but there's tracks of grizzlies all over the place. And, and, and I'm so glad my 357 Magnum was in the boat and my 270 rifle was in the boat. Because I, I, just for a moment, I thought, man, if I had my gun, I'd pop some holes in, that, in, 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 in the boat. Now, I wasn't going to shoot them, but you know what I did? I said, Lord, I repent. I'm out here amongst the bears, and I don't want to be ate. And so, Lord, I repent for being bitter at them. They are just who they are. So I'm in this steam house, and one after another left, and finally, it's just me and the old guy. And he takes a big old bucket, and it was enough to kill somebody. He dumped it on the barrel of rocks. And I mean, when he ran out the door, and I mean that because I got out of the spirit, say, stay in the spirit. So you got to stay in the spirit no matter what you're going through, no matter what affliction's attacking you, no matter what symptoms are happening. you got to stay in the spirit. That's called the realm of faith. The realm of faith is you being in the spirit, trusting, looking, trusting, depending upon God. And, and God hasn't given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. But at that moment, the spirit of fear hit me. And it felt like literally, have you ever got your face over a, a boiling pan of water on the stove accidentally? It'll, it'll, it'll just sear. And I mean, this heat hit my whole body. And I ran to the door. They locked the door. And I'm about ready to lose it when I heard the Lord say, get back in the spirit. Get back in the spirit. And so I fell on my face, started praying in tongues and it felt like an air conditioner blowing over the top of my body peace came joy came love came yeah get that devil <laughs> get that they blew up a balloon back there get that devil <laughs> you know so listen whatever you're going through you've got to get back to the the peace of god so love joy peace uh, number four long suffering that means you can suffer a long time and not complain how I many you know that's a divine attribute of God? Grab that. You need, you need to learn that. You need to, you need to be just long-suffering. Like, I'm not going to put up with that. Well, you better pray and ask God. Now, there's times when God will say, okay, that's enough. Uh, I, I've told you numerous stories. I worked for, uh, uh, as a janitor down in Oklahoma, and I had a big old guy, and he, he, he was a very twisted man. He's probably about... 15 years my senior my boss and he was constantly picking on me i'm just a little guy he, he'd get in my face he'd yell he'd scream he'd cuss he'd say terrible things but you understand i grew up with a gang outside of chicago and i used to cuss with the worst of them so no, no matter what he said to me it's nothing new to me i heard it all before because i used to say it and and so uh one night I, I, it's it's uh you know and and i needed a job to keep going to rama and, and the, my apartment and actually i i was 500 dollars short every month when i left rhema though i never asked anybody for money guess what all of our bills were paid off and we were good to go and uh, so anyways one night i was waxing floors I'm, I'm way ahead of schedule and he comes in there like a raving idiot just yelling screaming right in my face i mean just all over me and i wasn't intimidated i don't have a spirit of fear and uh, I've dealt with these guys coming out of jail for 20 years. And I mean, I'm telling you, I, don't, I can't tell you how many times they threatened to kill me. I'll just laugh at them. <laughs> Not because I, I, I'm some kind of he, man. No, it's because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And, and so when he, he got in my face, the Lord said, okay, you're done here. I said, really, Lord? Now, I don't have a spirit. See, a lot of people keep jobs they hate because they have a spirit of fear. Man, if I quit this job, what am I going to do? Now, it could be you need to pray, and you're not there for the money anyway. Say, I'm not there for the money. Well, you say, I can't lie, Pastor. I'm there for the money. <laughs> but you're not supposed to be there for the money, because whatever you do, do is unto the Lord. I heard the Lord say, you're done here. So I told the guy, I said, well, I'm done. He said, what? I said, I quit. You can't quit, because I was the hardest worker on the whole team. And, and I, and I said, I'm done. And I walked out the door, and within three days, I said, Lord, I said, I sure like to work at the Bible school. I'm going to Rama, And in three days, they hired me to work on the grounds. But see, I refused. I was long-suffering. I put up with that guy for months. Why did you put up with him yelling, screaming, cussing, you know, trying to push you around? Because I was being a witness. 
I was letting my light shine. I was letting the salt, you know, and it was working. It was making them miserable. You know, people who are ungodly, they'll get around you and they'll be tormented. If you're a godly person, and I'm not talking, I didn't preach at them. I didn't harp on them. I didn't, it wasn't better than thou because I know without Christ, there go I. But I was just letting my light shine. So, uh, uh, listen, number five, and guys, I want you to reach up and grab this right now before I tell you what it is. Go ahead. Grab it, grab it. Gentleness. Gentleness. We need to be gentle, guys. The gentleness and the meekness of Christ. I didn't really understand that. And I'm not saying I didn't have any of it. I just didn't get a revelation of it uh, until I almost lost my wife back in about 2003. And the Lord began to deal with me. He said, son, I want you to be gentle to her. You need to be gentle. And I grabbed a hold of that. And I said, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'll, you know. Now, my dad was not a gentle man. I mean, the way he, the way he treated my mom, except when he drank. There was a time when he would drink. He'd be really sweet and loving. But how I many you know that didn't last very long? Then it, become, it became anger and yelling and screaming, you know, because it's not the divine gentleness of God. But I'll tell you what, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm still learning to apprehend to be gentle. To be gentle. God wants me to be a gentleman. That doesn't mean uh, I'm infeminine. And, and that's where I had a mix-up because I used to equate gentleness with in, uh, being infeminine. Uh, 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 you know, being, being sissified. Christians are not sissified. No, we're not. We're men. But I can be gentle. A soft word turneth away wrath. So I've had men get in my face. When I was down in, Phil, uh, in, in uh, Baltimore, and, and a, guy, a Muslim, a radical Muslim, was going to murder my son Michael, and I got between him and the Muslim, and, and, and my kids saw it, and Tiny, Tiny was there, Tiny Richardson was there, and that man is spitting, that Muslim is spitting, yelling, screaming in my face. He's got a gun in his pocket, but I was gentle with him. And I had no fear. Now, I thought this is my time. I really did. So I had a little bit of tears in my eyes because I, I, I just said, Lord, if I got to be a martyr, I'll be a martyr. And I didn't really want to die, but I had no fear of dying. I just said, Lord, if this is it, this is it. And, 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 but I was gentle with the man. And, and after the guy finally walked away, I mean, the guy's in my face. He's back and forth. Back, everybody, the whole place was quiet. He's spitting in my face. He's yelling and screaming. I'm just standing there. I'm just... Preaching Jesus to him. And finally, uh, a woman came up to me after he left and said, I I've never seen nothing like that in my life. Uh, you just stood there and you just spoke so, so, so sweet to him, so nice to him. So uh, I said, yeah, that's Jesus in me. That ain't me. <laughs> and so when it talks about being filled with all the fullness of God, that we can be vessels meet for the master of Zeus. I tell you, the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro upon the face of the earth to make to show himself strong on behalf of them whose hearts are perfect towards him or you're in agreement with his nature and his character. And so you apprehend this by faith. First, first of all, you got to see you need it. You need men and women. Men and women, we need the gentleness of Christ. Dealing with everybody and anybody, we need the gentleness of Christ. That doesn't mean you're a pushover. It doesn't mean, God, brother, you're sissified. It just means you're a man and you can still be sweet. No matter how they yell and scream and cuss and, and they threaten you, you can still be sweet. You can still be nice. One of the fruits of the Spirit is kindness. You can be kind. Some of the most unkind people I know are Christians. You ought to be kind like Jesus was kind. He was kind. Well, he told those Pharisees they were nothing but a bunch of snakes and vipers. White and separate. No, he did it with gentleness and kindness. You know why he told them that? He was trying to warn them. He was trying to tell them out of love, you're, you're in trouble, guy. You just don't know it. You're going you're gonna to lose your soul. You just don't know it. And I'm telling you in love. I'm telling you in kindness. You, you need to repent. You know, when we preach... When, when we're out on the streets preaching Christ, and, and I'm not saying I always have, but it ought to be full of nothing but compassion, nothing but kindness, nothing but gentleness, nothing but meekness, nothing but the character of God. And number seven, the goodness of God. You know what? My goodness is as filthy rags, but you know what? I ought to be good to my word. Now, here's one thing I would tell you right now. Don't ever, ever make a commitment until God tells you to make a commitment. See, I don't go along. I don't, I don't agree at all. Preachers trying to get people to make a commitment financially to their local church. 
Because you, you, can be, you, can, you can be caught up in the, in, the, in the moment, and now you're making a commitment, and it's not of God. Hello? So don't, don't, I don't believe in pledges. I really don't. Now, if God tells you, now I made a commitment, Joan didn't make a commitment, when out of my mouth said, we're going to give you $10,000, that was the Holy Spirit speaking through me. And it's not mine. And and you say, well, Pastor Mike, it might have been our money. No, the minute you put it in the offering basket, it's no longer yours. It belongs to God. I I know for a fact because somebody told me, and it's okay, last year when we gave away $70,000 for orphans and widows and missionary work, I mean, we lost people from the church because they said we should have used it to fix this building. Now, I understand where you're coming from. That's the natural way of thinking. But you know what? When God says do something, well, how do we know, Pastor Mike, you can really hear from God? Well, let me ask you something. If you don't think the, the leadership of this church can hear from God, what in the world are you coming here for? That just don't make no sense. Not that I'm perfect, but if you don't trust the leadership, now, it's you're trusting Jesus in us. Not that we can't miss it, because we have missed it. But what in the world are you even coming here for? Amen. Amen. And, and, you know, so it was the goodness. We had a, and then faith, faith the word, uh, one of the fruits is faith, but actually in the Greek it's faithfulness. You know what? I, I wasn't faithful to anything but me before I got saved. I mean, I was committed to Mike Yeager, what he wanted, what he want, where he wanted to go, how he wanted to do it. And I mean, you know, I was raccoon hunting and fishing and, 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 you know, doing whatever, all kinds of sports and activities and, you know, and other times doing things I won't mention. But I was committed. You know what? When I got born again, I became committed to God, faithful to God. It's required for us to be faithful what is faithful? That means you're consistent. You're diligent. That means it's between you and Jesus now. You know, I, I really don't. When people, you know, leave the church, I don't chase them. Why? Because, you know what? If they, now, if, if, if they want to be here, they'll be here. True story. When the first time I pastored an Assembly God church, not the first church, the second church I pastored. And, and I was told, basically, somebody older than me said, you got to visit, visit, visit. And so I did. I mean, I visited and visited and visited. One family be here one week. They wouldn't be the next. I'd go visit, visit them. And, and you know what happened? It, it didn't work. They weren't back the next week. Oh, they enjoyed my company. And I'm not saying we shouldn't visit people when they're sick, when they're needy. When they got problems, when their life was falling down, I say we should go rescue them. But what really happened to me, and some of you know uh, Brother Jeff, who pastored the Assembly of God Church down the road. And me and Jeff, we went out one day with some other pastors, and he, he looked like he was worn out. It was the first year he was at Heritage Assembly of God. And, and, I, and I said to him, Jeff, why do you look so tired? He said, oh, Brother Mike, I've just visited and visited and visited. I said, listen, come back and talk to me a year from now and tell me if it worked. And he came back, it was about a year later, he had done over 300 and some visits that year and I said did it work he said it didn't work at all he, he said I'd visit him and visit him and they didn't it didn't work at all he, because he, he said if you I found out he said the more I visited the more that I had to visit them because if I didn't visit them then they would stop coming he said it didn't work Amen. I'm not saying we shouldn't visit people out of love as God leads us and guides us. But if that pastor, all he's doing, if he's got a church of 200 or 300, you know what? He'll never have time to be in the word of God. He'll never time, have time to get the mind of Christ. He'll never be, to have time to get into the Holy Ghost. Okay, so you got to be faithful. Say faithful. faithful. Now, I'm faithful to my wife. But let me tell you why I'm faithful to my wife of almost 44 years. You know why? Because of the spirit of God in me. I'm not faithful to her because she's such a wonderful, amazing, awesome woman. No, she is. I'm faithful to my wife because because of God's faithfulness in me for him. I know my wife is faithful to me, not because of her deep love for me. And she stands in awe in the amazing husband she's married. Get out of here. No, she is faithful because of this, the fruit of faithfulness in her. Uh, Joseph was faithful and he would not mess with Potiphar's wife. He said, I'm not going to do this to your husband and I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this to God. Y'all reach up and grab that faithfulness. We got to be faithful. And, and if God sends you to a local church, if God, and God's going to find, he, God wants to help you find a church you can go and grow. You go to a church to grow. And God wants you to be faithful as much as possible. 
Now, I know sometimes you can't be. I know circumstances, so this is not a legalistic doctrine. I'm just saying that's, one, that's what God wants you to be, full of faithfulness. Jesus was faithful in all of his house. And, and you know what? Faithfulness, you ask employees right now, they're having a nightmare because they can't, uh, employers, they can't find employees that are faithful. That used to be something that was natural. Do you know even a lot of the natural characteristics which are a shadow of the fruits of the Spirit, but they are not the fruits of the Spirit? They're dying. Faithfulness is dying. In, in, in America, people are not faithful. They're, they're, not, they, they're not committed. They won't keep their word. But we should keep our word. Just make sure if you give your word, it's God. Now, let me also tell you something. If you gave your word to do something and you went home and prayed, let's say, for instance, you came to Pastor Mike and said, uh, uh, Brother Mike, I really believe that God wants me to do this. And I'll tell you, I said, we'll pray about it. And, and then all of a sudden, uh, you, you were in prayer and the Lord said, I, I didn't tell you to do that. I didn't tell you to do that. You can call me right up and say, Brother Mike, I prayed about this. I, I'm out of the will of God. I'm like a square peg in a round hole. I lost my peace. I don't have no peace. I said I would do this, but I don't have my peace. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, wonderful, that because somebody, somebody else belongs in that place then. And you're taking their place. Y you getting any of that? Yeah, yeah. I, I know it just sounds like, you know, meat and potato teaching, but this stuff is important. Meekness. That means no matter how long you've been in walking with God, you, 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 did, you need, to be, need to be more teachable than you were yesterday. Yeah. I didn't say gullible. I said you're teachable. You know, I just got done. I just wrote a book about uh, Job, and I studied a book of Job years ago. I've just been waiting for the Lord to tell me to write this book, and I just finished it and published it yesterday or the day before. But as I was going through the book of Job, I, I, man, I learned so much. He was sincere, but he was sincerely wrong. And I discovered a lot of things that Job believed is still what the church is still believing in this age. And, and, and that, those, those, those things you've been taught that, are, that contradict what Jesus said, you need to let them get ripped out of you. You know what I'm telling you? See, they believed in the days of Job all the way up to the time of Jesus. If anything bad happened to you, that was God punishing you. And it's not God punishing you. There's a devil, and he's out to still kill and destroy. And then they say, well, God permitted the heads to come down. I show you through that book, Job, God didn't say, I took the whole. You know, people say, God allowed it, God permitted it. And, and you know, right away when they say that, they don't, they don't really, they're not very deep in the revelation of God. God gave man authority. God gave man authority. You, you know, uh, I, one time I gave someone, I, I, I you know, gave someone a car. And when they took this car, it wasn't very long before they turned it into a junker. But guess what? The minute I gave the keys to that car to them, it was no longer my business. Amen. That wasn't my business. If they, if they want to give that car away to somebody else that I just gave them, that's none of my business. God gave this earth to man. Did you know the heavens belong to the Lord and the earth does he give to man? And so when Adam gave the keys to uh, uh, the devil, and he did when he partook of the forbidden fruit, God said, okay, now I've got to find a legal way to come back into the earth. And the only legal way he could come back into the earth was as a man. He had to become a man to buy back what he created. And so Jesus said, whatever you bind will be bound and whatever you loose will be loosed. And so the devil has a heyday because they say, well, God permitted the devil. The truth of the matter is you did by your ignorance. Just because you're ignorant doesn't mean that you didn't have authority. You just didn't use your authority. You know, arthritis tried to hit my body when I was in my 30s. I just said, I'm not putting up with it. I bind that in the name of Jesus. Did the pain leave? Did the arthritis leave right away? No, the, the, the symptoms didn't leave. But I knew in my heart they had no choice. They had to go. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. And it took a couple of weeks and it'd go and come back. It'd come, it'd come, and it'd come back. And, and you know what? And it still tries to come back. But I have no arthritis in my 66-year-old body. You know why? I took authority over it. I took authority over it. You, whatever you bind will be bound. Whatever you loose will be loose. Do you believe this stuff? Yes. It's not my words. It's the word of God. Yes. And, and so you got to put, okay, so meekness. Number nine, self-control, temperance. You know, you ought to grab that. 
You know, the reason why people teach people, well, once you're born again, all your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future, you don't have to deal with sin in your life anymore, is because those people don't have self-control. They don't have self-control. They're not operating in the fruit of temperance. Now, you want to be filled with all the fullness of God, you can be filled with, in the name of Jesus, body shut up. In the name of Jesus, you're not watching that. You're not listening to that. You know, I don't listen to gossip. I refuse to. People come and they try to fill me with gossip. I said, nope, stop right there. Oh, I don't want to hear it. I said, let's pray for them. Let's stand in the gap. Now, as a pastor, if something's going on in a local body and somebody comes to me out of love and concern, I, I, I have to, you know, look at it and say, God, what do you want me to do? Uh, and, 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 and if God wants me to do something, I'll do something about it. Otherwise, there's times that he'll tell me, he said, no, just pray right now. Just, you know, give them some time to repent. And, and, and I've seen people at times, you know, we're not jumping on people. We're not, we're, not gonna, we're not gonna take a person and we're gonna stone them because they're out of the will of God. But we're gonna get the mind of Christ to how to help that person get out of that problem. Amen. Right. Yeah. Amen. Okay, so uh, uh, t- 10, k- kindness. Uh, 11, holiness. How I many you know God says, be holy as I am holy? Amen. Yeah. You, need, you need by faith. I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk in the holiness of God. I'm, 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 Lord, I'm yours. Here I am, every part of my being. My eyes, my ears, my mouth, my hands, my life. Now, I'm not saying we attain the complete. You know, first of all, holiness is, 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 is assimilated. How, how do you get holiness? Let me tell you one way. I wrote a book on uh, apprehending divine holiness. And, and, and uh, how do you apprehend? You know, when a child is small, that child, when that child comes home, if that child is, is full of, uh, of bad stuff before they left the home and they get home, they're full of stuff. You say to them, who you've been hanging around with? Holiness is assimilated. The closer you to get to God, the more of his holiness will be on you. My wife sometimes, because the people up there, uh, some of those guys up in the hill, they're heavy smokers. I'll come home and, and she'll say, oh, you stink. And, and it's almost like she's saying, have you been smoking? She knows I don't smoke. But you know what? I get around the guys who smoke and guess what? That, 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 that it permeates my clothes, right? You listen, you draw close to God and you can't help but be holy. So if you're telling me you're walking with God and there's no holiness in your life, you're lying to yourself. The, the more you get close, the closer I get to God, the more holy life I'm going to live. And holiness is not a clothesline doctrine. It's not the length of your hair. It's a relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay, number 12, forbearance. Number 13, bowels of mercy. You know, we got to have mercy on people. Have mercy on people. My attitude has been since I've been saved. I'd rather be taken advantage of than to take advantage of someone. I'd rather go the extra mile. I'd rather let somebody take advantage of me than me to take advantage of them. Y- y'all know what I'm talking about? I mean, if we're going to be vessels meet for the master's use, we're going to have to have mercy. Because God says, if you don't have mercy, I'm not having mercy on you. Now, I'm not saying you just let people just do what they want. There comes a time when God says, I have put many men out of the houses that I have rented to them. And I rent them day by day, not by, by the month, uh, but I, one, one day at a time. And there's been times, usually it's a three-strike policy. Three strikes, you're out. And I will warn him. I'll go to him. I said, now, listen, man. I said, if you don't stop it, I said, I'm going to have to put you outside the house. Now, there's other times because of the safety of the other people in there. I had one guy pulled another guy, a, a knife on another guy. I put him out right then in there. Big guy. Big guy. You can't throw me out. I said, you're out the door. I said, this is not a, a it's not like a regular house rental. I said, you rent a room from me and you're endangering everybody's life and you're going out the door right now. I came up one, one night as I get ready to close here. I was laying in bed. And there was a terrible snowstorm going on. And at 3 o'clock in the morning, I heard the Lord say this to me. Go up to the house on the hill. You need to deal with something. When I heard the Lord say that, I jumped right up out of bed. Put on my winter clothes. Went up there. Uh, got up the driveway. I walked into the front door. I mean, it was snowing heavy. 3 o'clock in the morning. I go in there. And here's a, one of the guys that I have warned in the past. And he, he, him, him, him and a lady were on the couch. And I'm not even going to tell you what they were involved in. Right then and there, I stopped it. I said, oh, stop. I said, right there. What, what, what? I said, get up, get dressed. What? Out the door you go. You, you can't kick me out in the middle of a snowstorm. I said, oh, yes, I can. 
And I said, now I, I wasn't going to back it up physically. It was the divine authority of God. I walked him right out into the snowstorm. Because I heard the Lord say I had given him plenty of times to repent. And, 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 and the guy didn't want to get right with God. Hey, how many of you know if you don't want to get right with God, there's nothing you can do about it? Pastor, what does this have to do with being filled with all the fullness of God? Listen, if, if we don't apprehend these divine characteristics, the Holy Ghost can't move in you. He can't flow through you. And the la one last thing, number 14, you must apprehend the knowledge of God. You got to have knowledge. You, the, the knowledge of Jesus Christ, uh, the knowledge of God, grace and, 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 and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God. Can, can you say amen? Well, I'll shut up. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. Come on. That, that we're talking, you know, we read that scripture that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. And people think it means his power, his glory, his anointing, his... Well, well, wait, wait. All that stuff comes where his character is, his nature is, his personality is. I'm telling you, the greatest thing you can use your faith for, even though healing is yours, prosperity is yours, all of that. But the greatest thing you can use your faith for is to apprehend the nature of God, the character of God. I wasn't raised in a home that believed in any of this stuff. But you know what? Those, the things I just shared with you, they're in my life. All of those fruits I just mentioned to you, I'm not saying I'm 100% love, 100% joy, 100% peace. You know, I'm not saying I'm 100% patient, 100% gentleness, 100% kindness, but, but I'm apprehending more and more every day. And, and I'm telling you what, you want heaven in your home? Let those things become real to you. And, and don't say this, well, if they get it, I'll get it. No, no, you get it. Tell somebody, yeah, I need it. I need it. <laughs> it's like some of you are, are afraid to look around or something. I, was gonna t I wasn't going to tell you, tell your neighbor you need it. Because <laughs> then we're fighting. We're Jack, did you hear that, honey? You need it more gentle. You need to be more kind. You need to be more, more forgiving. You need to be more merciful. You need to be long-suffering, you know. And, and, uh, but you know what? The, the thing is that the circumstances of life, you say, well, if I, I would be long-suffering if I didn't have to live with this person. No, that's the evidence. That's the proof of it. Of you being in a situation where a natural person wouldn't put up with it. Did you get something tonight? Yeah. So I'm trying to teach you where God shows up. God shows up when somebody's personality is like his. How many like to hang around people just like you? If you don't, something's wrong, right? <laughs> You all like to hang around people that agree with you. How many like to hang around people who don't agree with you? None of us. Oh, oh Ray does. <laughs> no, we like to hang around people that agree with us. Well, God loves to hang around people who agree with them. Amen. And, and so let's, uh, you know, a spiritual choir practice tonight. Let God do some adjustments in your heart, in your nature, in your character. Go ahead and close your eyes. I'm going to pray and ask God to step in and just begin to crack some bones and Straighten some limbs and Lord, I pray right now, Lord, we need your nature. We need your character. We need your personality. Lord, we want these fruits to be just hanging on the branches of our tree. Lord, where people can come and grab that apple of kindness and that banana of joy and that, that uh, uh, orange of, 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 of meekness, Lord. Lord, let these fruits be manifested, I pray. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you give to your people, not just here, those who are watching, a hunger to be a partaker of your divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, in Jesus' name. Now, one more time, give the Lord a hand clap and a shout.